hi everyone welcome back to my channel so my name is Desire. today i'm going to be taking you through a step-by-step -step process of applying to business school right so whether you are a recent graduate or you're an experienced professional who is looking to navigate this whole system and you're not sure what the processes are what the steps are this is the perfect video that you should watch all the way to the very end okay um and before i go into this i would just like to demystify the concept of rounds I'd been saying rounds, rounds in my previous videos, and somebody asked me, was like, okay, so what are these rounds? And I was like, you know, it's the cost of knowledge to actually think that people know what you are saying without you explaining to them. So I apologize for that. Application rounds are the windows that schools open up for people to be able to apply. So many schools usually have a couple of rounds. So round one, round two, round three, round four. It's not cast in stone. So for instance, round one is typically between September and like late November. Round two is between January and maybe early March. Round three is between late March and, you know, May, you know, things like that. So for instance, round one, you have the application the application window is open between September and November. And then you expect to get a decision by december so it goes like that the thing about this rounds is you cannot apply to different rounds for the same school you can apply to different schools in different rounds so for instance you can apply to school a for round one and then go ahead to apply to school b in round two but you can't apply to school a round one and round two you understand all right so now the first step is identifying your why i say this all the time because it's very important what is the reason why you are going on this journey? Why do you want to get an MBA? What is the reason why you are going to business school? What are the things that are important for you? Is it the network? Is it funding? Is it your life after school? Is it career prospects? What is it? You need to itemize these things because those would guide your decision for the next step. Now, the next step is doing a lot of research. Now, you have to do a ton of research. Now, you have to do a ton of research on the schools that will fit your profile, the schools that will fit the things that you are actually looking to get out of the MBA program. You can use a lot of resources like websites, ranking websites, alums, you know, just checking out different schools and seeing what they offer and how they will best suit your needs. So, for instance, some people are particular about the location or the length of the program. Is it the one-year MBA or the two-year MBA program? Some people are very particular about schools that offer some type of specialization because that is where they are looking to get a job in afterwards. They, they want to know who the major players are in that field. Some other people just want fully funded scholarships, right? I know a lot of us really want fully funded scholarships. So, they are looking out for what kind of schools will provide them fully funded funded scholarship and possibly give them a graduate assistantship that will cover for their living expenses while they are in school. Some people are very big on prestige. They want to go to the top five, ten schools because they like the brand and the name. So you need to decide what works for you, what fits your profile, what you're really gunning for. Write it down and do your research. Find schools that fit that profile and then begin to engage with them. Now, the third step is reaching out, reaching out to admissions committee members, current students, and possibly alums. Now, you're reaching out to admissions committee members to get a sense of what they are actually looking out for in candidates and to possibly get a or an application fee waiver out of that conversation. You are reaching out to students to understand what their life has been like since they started school. You are reaching out to them to know what they feel made their application stand out and what tips they could offer you in your own application process. You are reaching out to alum to find out what life is like after school. How do they assess the ROI, right? What kind of life are they living? What kind of jobs? What kind of businesses are they running? What kind of things are they doing, right? It will give you a sense of what to expect when you enroll in their program. So when you're reaching out to admissions committee members, if you're very particular about scholarships, it's a good time for you to ask them for their scholarship options right what kind of grants does the school offer what kind of opportunities for funding is available for international students now the next step is planning which i believe can be done concurrently with step three planning for your exams planning for how you'd study planning to actually take the exams depending on where you are 
depending on if the school is going to offer you a waiver or not, if you're going to write the examinations or if you're just going to turn in essays, you need to plan. So planning to take the exams, planning to pay for the exams, planning to reach out to people that would help you, planning all of your finances during the application process. The next step ideally should be studying and writing your exams. I've done a whole video on preparing for GRE and GMAT, so definitely check that out to find some resources that could help you while you study. The next step of the process is a major step, which is the online application itself. This is the process of creating an online application account, highlighting sections of the application such as your personal information, your education or work experience, and importantly, your essays and statements of purpose. This is usually the part that takes the longest time um, for you to actually work on. It might take a number of days to put in your writing together, but this is where your why comes in, right? So from some of the things you have written down at the beginning of this process, you can already begin to define your statement of purpose from the reasons why you are going on this adventure. Now, the next step after the online application is the letter of recommendation. This is where you actually speak to people, either people that you work with, people that you have, you have a relationship with people who can speak to your experience on how they could recommend you to school. It's very important for you not just to select somebody who's high up in your organization, but to actually select somebody who has worked closely with you, who can write down solid things about your experience and the value that you have brought to the work to the workplace and how they feel like you'll be a great addition to the program. Now, fingers crossed, your application goes through, your letter of recommendation is sent in, the school then reaches out to you for an admissions interview. I've also done a video on how to prepare to ace a scholarship interview. And I'll be linking it right up for you to watch it and get some guidance. Depending on the type of school, and this is where your conversation or your relationship with current student comes to play because you ask them what the interview process was like for them the year or two years before. Many schools usually do like cases or behavioral interviews just to test if you are a great fit for their program. Now, after this interview is done, I always say that it's important to send thank you notes to the interviewers, right? Thank everyone that interviewed you tell them how you are looking forward enthusiastically to joining their program and just let them know that you really want to attend the program now the next step is the waiting period or the decision phase which should typically take between three weeks to six weeks from your interview it's that point where you're waiting for them to get back to you on whether you've secured an admission or not. It could be a very challenging time to just sit in silence and wait for the schools to get back to you. But the only thing you can do is to hope and to wait, right? And that's why it's important for you to apply early on. So if you apply in round one, you don't get a good decision, which we don't hope for. But it gives you an opportunity to apply in round two for another school. And I'll typically say that if you're gunning for a scholarship offer, you should try to apply for the earlier rounds because that's when the scholarships really go you know, fast. So if you're looking to get a fully funded scholarship, great for you to apply in round one, round two you know so that you can get a fair share of what is obtained from the school the journey can be really demanding but it's incredibly rewarding now since i started this channel last year i have done several videos and i have received at least 50 testimonials of people who got fully funded scholarships from just watching my videos putting the things that i said together and just running ahead with it so it's absolutely possible but if you think you still need hand holding you need someone to guide you through the process step by step you need someone to review your work revise it to give you dedicated help to offer you customized help i invite you to click the link in my description to book some time on my calendar thank you for watching i do hope you like you subscribe and you share this video with your network till next time bye